Okrama Media in Johannesburg, I'm Sane Lamini. He calls himself an activist and he's also a board member of the Ahmed Katrada Foundation and former MEC for Transport in Gauteng, Ishmael Bati. He's here to join me today to discuss his book titled Tambi Naidu and Family Struggle for Non-Racial Democracy in South Africa. So Mr. Vadi, this book speaks about one of South Africa's courageous freedom fighters, Tambi Naidu, who came to our country in the late 1800s and was a founding member and president of the Transvaal Indian Congress. Can you briefly tell us about him, of how he came to our country and how he and his family made a life in South Africa? Yes, I think Tambi Naidu's family is, uh, has made a profound contribution to our freedom struggle. Uh, he came to South Africa in 1889 uh, as a young boy, originally from Mauritius. So his grandparents were from India, but he himself was born in Mauritius. And he and his siblings, a brother and a sister, moved to South Africa uh, after they heard about the discovery of gold and diamonds, uh, gold in Johannesburg and diamonds in the Kimberley area. So they had come over to try and make a new living here. Uh, primarily for economic reasons. And as a young man, settled for a short while in, uh, in Port Elizabeth and Kimley, and then they made their way to, to Johannesburg. So by, by 1890s, in the early 1890s, uh, he was uh, uh, basically a hawker and a petty trader uh, in and around what was, what was then emerging Johannesburg. It wasn't Johannesburg as we understand it today. It was an uh, emerging city. And Tami Naidu, uh, you know, established himself there and started trading. And in a short while thereafter, he married his wife, uh, Viva Malpalei, also from Mauritius. She had also come with, the, with her parents to, to South Africa. And uh, they, 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 they got married and settled down in Johannesburg. So that's, in a sense, the first generation. And the book that I've written is called Tambi Naidu and Family, uh, the uh, contribution to the non-racial to the struggle for freedom and democracy in South Africa. And what it looks at is four generations of the Naidu family uh, in terms of their contribution to our freedom struggle. So it is a family biography. I was touched when I saw that Mahatma Gandhi also referred to him as his right-hand man. Can you briefly tell us about how they met and the political work that they did together? Yes, Gandhi was brought to South Africa in 1893 by an Indian businessman in the Durban area. He had a legal dispute with a business partner and then uh, had invited Gandhi as a lawyer to represent his interest. Of course, you know that um, by 1894, Gandhi and, and some of the other Indian merchants in the area uh, were experiencing discrimination as the broader sections of the Indian people, particularly the indentured uh, workers on the sugarcane plantations. And Gandhi then you know, started organizing together with some of the prominent Indian people here. And they established the Natal Indian Congress in, in 1894. Uh, by that time, I mean, Tambi Naidu and, and Gandhi had not even met, but they really met when Gandhi moved to the old Transvaal uh, in 1903 or 1904. And there, I think Indians generally experienced much harsher levels of, of racial discrimination particularly in the Afrikaner Republic. You will remember that Transvaal and the Orange Free State were under Afrikaner control after the Anglo-Boer War. Uh, the British had taken over again. And so Gandhi established what was called the Transvaal British Indian Association, which basically, you know, later was renamed as the Transvaal Indian Congress. And very soon, Tambi Naidu met with Gandhi. They say through a, a Reverend Doak, who was based in Johannesburg, they became friends and he was introduced to Gandhi. And they developed a political association which lasted for, for a long time thereafter. And his wife, Viramal, was also a leader in her own right. It was interesting to read that uh, Mr. Naidu adopted a non-sexist approach and allowed her and even his daughters to take part in the struggle. Can you tell us about that? Yes, look, if you think back, I mean, to the early 20th century, mm -hmm. uh, there was no real women's movement in the country. Even the ANC itself was not formed. I mean, the ANC was only established in 1912. And for, for, for Tambi Naidu, I mean, people had always imagined that the women who participated 
in the passive resistance campaign from 1906 to 1914 were really accompanying their husbands. But in Viva Mal, you see a bit more than that. You see a very independent woman, a person who's got tremendous organizational capabilities uh, and played a leading role in mobilizing not just women, but also Indian workers uh, in, the, in, the, in the Durban area, particularly in the sugarcane plantations and, and the, the, the Natal uh, coal mines. Uh, Vivermal played quite an important uh, role in mobilizing those workers in support of the passive resistance campaign. She herself had gone to jail uh, on, on more than one occasion during, that, uh, during those passive resistance campaign and continued to be active in the women's movement right up till her death in 1946. Even after her husband passed away in 1933, Vivamal remained an activist. She was a leader in what was then called the Transvaal Indian Women's Association uh, and played quite an active role. And the interesting thing is when the 1946 passive resistance campaign was launched by the Natal Indian Congress and the Transvaal Indian Congress under the leadership of Dr. Monty Naika and Dr. Yusuf Dadu, just before her death, she played a prominent role in mobilizing women in support of the, of the passive resistance campaign of 1946. When Gandhi uh, left South Africa for India in 1914, Tambi Naidu did an extraordinary thing uh, during Gandhi's farewell. Yes, now that, that even Vivamal, I think, was taken by complete surprise from what we are able to understand. Uh, at the farewell ceremony, they had a very big dinner in, in Johannesburg, as they did in Natal and also in Cape Town. And at the end of that, Tambi Naidu just got up and said, Gandhi, I am bequeathing four of my sons to join you in India for the Indian national struggle against British imperialism and British colonialism uh, in the Indian subcontinent. Vivamal, I think he had not conferred with her, he had not discussed it. She got a shock and they say that she almost collapsed because these were little boys. I mean, most of them were born in, the, in, the, in 1901 onwards. So, so they were really kids, 8, 9, 10, 14 years old. And the next thing, they shipped onto a boat with Gandhi. One of them died in India, Pakiri. There was a, a plague of some sort, and he passed away in 1918. And there, Vivamal, I think, was quite shaken by that. She sort of, you know, got some funds, etc., brought two of her sons back. But uh, Prema Naidu's father, who we know as Navan Sami Roy Naidu, he stayed in India up till 1928. So he spent almost 14 years uh, with Gandhi and then studied under the Indian Nobel laureate, Rabindranath Tagore. So that was quite a, you know, a significant thing because Tagore was a, a poet, uh, an intellectual, uh, a literary writer, a significant player in support of the broader, on, on the cultural plane, on the international, Indian national struggle against, against uh, Britain. So I think that all that rubbed off on, on the young Navan Sami Naidu. And when he came to South Africa, I mean, very soon, he joined the Transvaal Indian Congress, was not happy with the moderate tactics that was being used by the leadership then. And, uh, you know, quite quickly, by 1939, he joins the Communist Party. Uh, in the Transvaal Indian Congress, he uh, allied himself with Dr. Yusuf Dadu, who himself was a communist, and a young band of very radical, militant leaders, trade unionists, who are intellectuals, professional people, and a big struggle starts in the TIC for the control of the leadership. And by 1945, Dadu becomes the president of the Transvaal Indian Congress, and Navin Sami Naidu becomes a vice president of the Transvaal Indian, Indian Congress. So grandfather and grandmother leaders in the TIC, and the next generation now coming onto the leadership of the TIC in the 1940s. It was also interesting when, when I read about his wife now, uh, Amma, and the children like Indres and Pema Naidu. They also played a huge role in, into the uh, arms struggle against apartheid and also in the development of the now uh, the leading African National Congress and Transvaal Indian Congress into mass uh, popular movement. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so the generation of the 1940s, I think, were three important things stand out. One uh, is Amma Naidu. Amma means mother. It's a, it's a nickname. Her, her real name is Manon Mani. But if you ask any of the of women's leaders of the 1950s and 60s, Manon Mani, they won't know her. They know her as Amma Naidu. 
And that name has, in a sense, stuck. Um, profound contribution on the women's movement. She was together with Lillian Ngoyi, Helen Joseph, uh, Francis Bard, was a founding member of the Federation of South African Women uh, in 1954. She was involved in the Women's March of 1956. So if you see some of the more famous photographs, you'll of course see the four leaders in front, but just behind them, you'll see a lady with a sari. That's Amma Naidu. And remain, even after her husband passed away in 1953, she remained politically active in the Transvaal Union Congress, but more so in the Federation of South African Women. So a significant independent women's leader, uh, you know, apart from her husband or her family. And I think that's quite significant. The second thing that stands out is the point I made early on, is that we see the radicalization of the Transvaal Union Congress and also in the Natal Union Congress under Dr. Naika and some of the trade unionists here, a move towards more militant forms of actions uh, reflected in the 1946 to 1948 passive resistance campaign. So that was the second important development. And the third thing is really the, the linking of the Indian struggle to the national struggle for freedom. And that is really the historic alliance with the African National Congress signified by the signing of the, what is commonly known in the, in the Congress movement as the Dr. Spect. So a signature, a signed document between Dr. Dadu, uh, Dr. Kuma, who was the president of the ANC, and Dr. Monty Naika, who was the president of the NIC. And that Dr. Spect, in a sense, signified uh, the, the construction of a permanent or long-lasting political alliance between the ANC and the Indian Congresses, which have continued up to, I mean, up to the transition to democracy in our country. And uh, Tambi Naidu's uh, family line continues even now to contribute to the shaping of a new non-racial uh, South Africa. For example, now we know that his grandson, Kupen Naidu, previously served as head of the National Treasury's in a budget office, and he currently serves as deputy governor of the South African Reserve Bank. What are your main reflections on the over 100 year contribution by this family? I think two points stand out. I mean, if I can just track back a little bit to the 1950s, uh, mm -hmm. the Indian Congresses were an integral part of the defiance campaign, uh, the, the Congress of the People campaign in 1955, the adoption of the Freedom Charter. And those became, of course, policy documents for the ANC, but also the Indian Congresses. Uh, so that development of a mass movement in the 1950s, I think the credit for that really has to go uh, both to the ANC leadership of the time. Remember, a younger leadership had come to power within the ANC, Walter Sisulu, Mandela, uh, etc. So that, that generational shift is what we also saw in the Indian Congresses. And obviously, the joining of hands for a common struggle against apartheid and the National Party then. The next important thing is really the 1960s, when the ANC gets banned, uh, and, and of course, even the TIC and the NIC leaders, I mean, some of them were banned, others were jailed. Uh, Dr. Dadu had gone together with Oliver Tembo at the same time in, into exile. And there's this whole issue of the armed struggle. Now, you will remember this family, like so many others in the Indian community, were, were Gandhians. They believed in nonviolent resistance, nonviolent, uh, you know, uh, civil disobedience to, to discrimination and oppression. And they were, I think, in principle opposed to violence. But one of the first combatants of Umkonto Vesizwe is Indres Naidu, the son of Naran Sami and Ama Naidu. Uh, they were involved in a sabotage campaign in, in, in and around Johannesburg. They were early recruits to MK. Uh, they were infiltrated by an apartheid agent. And the night that they were actually doing a bombing at the Rabali uh, railway lines, they were caught on the act. Indres was shot uh, in the shoulder. And of course, they had to plead guilty. And they were amongst the first to be imprisoned on Robben Island uh, for 10 years. So in a sense, the 1960s marks a, a distinctive shift from nonviolent resistance to armed resistance or the armed struggle. I think that's an important development for the 1960s. And this family didn't pull back. They continued even in terms of the, the higher forms of struggle, that is armed struggle. And then as you, as you mentioned, I mean, the fourth generation 
all the all the children of Vema Naidu, Indves Naidu, Murthy, uh, and and Ramdi Naidu, Shanti, and I you know they didn't have children, but all of them have been active in one way or the other uh, in the struggle. So most of them were involved in the students' movement in the 1980s. Almost all of them participated in the school's boycotts of the 1980s, uh, in the uh, campaign against the tricameral parliament. Uh, and then, uh, of course, as you said, Kuban was detained in 1988. Uh, his father was, uh, Brema was detained in 1981. And again, during the states of emergency, he was detained for the second time. So Kuban wrote part of his metric exams in detention. He was kept at Diplo prison that we commonly know as Sun City. He has a family that has suffered, you know, imprisonment, detention, uh, being imprisoned during the passive resistance campaign, uh, during the states of emergency. Prema himself uh, was involved in, in facilitating the escape of three white ANC prisoners from Pretoria uh, uh, prison. Uh, he enabled one person to, to escape and leave the country and join the ANC in exile. He was uh, eventually sentenced for that uh, for three years in 1981. So he has a family of, I mean, just, you know, it's, it's unbroken struggle. It's 120 or 30 years of continuation, ongoing continuation in the struggle. Uh, Shanti Naidu, during the Winnie Mandela trial of 1972, uh, served, you know, was, sent, was uh, in solitary confinement for over a year, alone, absolutely alone in the women's prison in Johannesburg. So a family that has made a profound contribution, profound sacrifice, deep commitment, a deep dedication to the struggle. And uh, well, uh, they didn't get much in terms of monetary value. They remain ordinary working class people. Of course, some of them are, are very committed civil servants. I mean, Kuban's brother, Mayan, is a principal in Lanasia, a primary school. And as you've indicated, Kuban is the deputy governor of the South African Reserve Bank. And we who come from Indonesia, we are very proud of that. What lessons, uh, if I may ask, do you think uh, the leaders of today could learn from this amazing, amazing, amazing leader, Tambi Naidu, and his family? I think the lesson that could be learned is that, you know, the struggle was, is about values and principles and beliefs. It's not about acquisition of material wealth. Uh, it's not about, you know, becoming wealthy and driving fancy cars. So power must be used for the benefit of the people and not for self-benefit. I think that is, that is one thing that comes out very, very clearly. And those of the Naidu families, the third and fourth generations uh, who are with us, still, I think they are deeply committed to defending our democracy, defending our constitution. Uh, they are publicly, they have taken a stance against what we now know as state capture or you know, the manipulation of state processes for the accumulation of wealth for particular businesses or individuals or even political figures. They stand opposed to that. Uh, they, they are active in the, the ANC veterans and stalwarts uh, movement, the 101 veterans and stalwarts. Uh, still, I mean, they are, they are all in their 70s and 80s, but they remain committed. And I think that the point that comes out of that is that the struggle hasn't ended. You know, to rebuild our country, to reconstruct our country, it's going to be an ongoing process. It has to be a non-racial process. So we must make sure that, you know, all communities feel included uh, in the national project. All communities feel a part of rebuilding our country and should not feel a sense of exclusion or isolation. And then, of course, it, it can't be for, for, for self-enrichment. It has to be for the benefit of our people. And now, Mr. Vati, in addition uh, to serving as an ANC political representative and as a long-time transport MEC in Gauteng, you've also written a book uh, about South Africa's Freedom Charter and now this book about Tambi Naidu. How should it describe you as a politician and as a writer? <laughs> no, I'm oh. just an activist. Uh, I'm just an mm -hmm. activist. I must say... One of the mentors in my life has been Prema Naidu. I mean, he has remained yeah. a, working class leader, a, a very humble working class leader all his life. Deep commitment, tremendous courage. Uh, so I see myself just as an activist. Of course, uh, it has been a, a privilege to be a member of parliament from 1994 for 17 years. That was a, a real privilege for me. 
And then, uh, as you indicated, I served as the MEC for transport for nine years. Uh, that was a, a profound experience also for me. Uh, what I'm now doing is that I have, of course, retired from formal politics. So I, I serve on the board of the Ahmed Katrada Foundation, and this book has been published by the Katrada Foundation. Uh, I have written previously on the Congress of the People and the Freedom Charter campaign. That has been, I think, quite an important work because whilst people, you know, many South Africans cherish the Freedom Charter, but they didn't understand the history of it properly. So that has come out through the book. And currently I am, you know, ongoing research work. I think it's important. Uh, so I'm busy with, a, with my parliamentary years just to write a book on, on my experiences in parliament particularly in the transition period, 1994, 1999 under Mandela, and then again, uh, again under Mbeki. Those were important years, and many people, because they might be a little bit disappointed with the direction that the country is taking now, the economy is down, problems, etc., they are already forgetting. Even the younger generation don't know the, the, the power of that transition period, the impact it had on people. And there have been significant gains and achievements, but I think we also got significant, you know, very heavy challenges in front of us. So ongoing research, that's important. Uh, activism is still a part of my, my, my DNA. I think I will, will die as activist. I don't see myself as a leader. And then if I can, you know, inspire younger people, because I see in the Naidu family, they have inspired us. I've known the family now from 1980, so it's over 40 years. But their example has been an inspiration to me in my student days, during the days when I was in the Youth League. They have inspired us. So I think if we can be an inspiration to another generation, then perhaps the struggle has been, you know, will be an ongoing dynamic process. So lastly, Mr. Mr. Vadi, how can people get this book? Yes, the book is available from the Ahmed Katwada Foundation. So they're based mm -hmm. in Indonesia at the Signet Terrace. It costs 225 I have indicated that all the proceeds from the sales go to the Katwada Foundation, because I think we need to do ongoing research. So this will uh, you know, uh, support that, that program in the Katwada Foundation. But and, and if you can just contact the offices of the Katwada Foundation or Google them, send them an email, we'll try and make some arrangements uh, to get it out. In the case of an area, we are in touch with the, with the museum at the Moses Mabida Stadium. Uh, there's a museum there, a very lovely liberation history museum. Uh, we are in touch with them. We'll make copies available there. There's also the 1860 Heritage Center in Devon Central in Gravel. So we will we, we'll make some copies available for people in KZN. Uh, they, can, they can acquire books from there. Otherwise, it's Johannesburg. And then we are looking to, to put it on Take A Lot or uh, Shopify and uh, Amazon, it's be exploring that, that possibility. Once we've done the technical work around that and the details of that, then it will be available even online, yes. There was Ishmael Vadi in conversation with Quality about his book titled Tambi Naidu and Family, Struggle for Non-Racial Democracy in South Africa.